Hey everyone, Gary Simon of Corsetro.com and welcome to the final portion of this little tiny series where I've released about three videos. This is the third about cryptocurrencies and creating a very simple app that will retrieve data from a free, a 100% free cryptocurrency API from CryptoCompare.com and display that data. So the first two showed you how to do that with Vue.js and React. Now this one's going to be for Angular. So I, I figured, you know, might as well cover all the bases from the three major front end modern uh, JavaScript frameworks. So of course the world of cryptocurrencies and blockchain development are exploding. So as a developer, you're probably interested in learning more about these emergency or this emerging industry. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use again, Angular to interact with that API to retrieve and display information in your app. So let's get started. Oh, but real quick, before we begin, make sure you check out my site, CourseCetro.com, where you're going to find a bunch of courses on modern design and development. A lot are free, and the others you can access for the cost of buying me like a six-pack each month. That's it. Now, also, it probably wouldn't hurt to subscribe here on YouTube, and be sure to make sure the notifications are turned on. All right, let's get back to it. First, for prerequisites... Of course, uh, if you're new to Angular or these modern JavaScript frameworks, you're going to need Node.js with NPM or Node Package Manager. So to check whether or not you have that, open up your command line or console and type node-v, npm-v. Of course, they give me version numbers because I already have it installed, but it may go unrecognized for you. And if that's the case, make sure to go to nodejs.org, download the appropriate installer in the download section for your operating system and then install it with the default settings and reload your command line or console and you can run these and you'll get version numbers. All right, so let's go ahead and start the actual project. So we're going to use the Angular CLI or command line interface to start our Angular project. So let's install that through NPM. The way you do that, NPM, install, at Angular, CLI, and G for global. Now hit enter. I'm not going to because I already have a fresh copy installed. It'll take about maybe, you know, 30 to 60 seconds. Then next, after that's done, we're going to use the newly installed CLI to start the project. So to access the CLI, we type in ng for Angular and then new for a new project and then the name of a project and that's going to be Angular Crypto. You can name it whatever you want. So hit enter, and I'm going to pause this until it's finished. All right, and it's done. So we can see here, project is Angular Crypto, the name we gave it. So let's CD into that. All right, great. So from here, we can run ng serve, and that will launch development server and we can access it at localhost 4200 right there in the browser. And there we go. Here's our really exciting, rather ugly default um, Angular landing page right there. So now the next part is going to be connecting to the actual Crypto Compare API. So, you know, unlike React and Vue, Angular comes equipped fortunately, with an HTTP library, so we don't have to install anything in terms of an external HTTP uh, library. Uh, but it's generally a good practice to stick your API calls in a service file here in Angular. So let's generate a service file using the CLI. So I'm using, by the way, a lot of people ask me this question all the time, like, you know, what console are you using? I'm, I'm in Windows, so I'm using Commander. So C-M-D-E-R, just go to Google and type that. You can get the same one. It's free. And uh, this allows you, by the way, to right-click at the bottom status bar, launch a new console, hit start. We're going to go back into the same project. So that's going to be CD code, CD, and then Angular Crypto. And we're going to use this uh, inside the project for NPM to in, or not NPM, sorry, but the Angular CLI, ng generate service. So we're generating a service called data. 
that's where our API calls are going to go to interact with the uh, Crypto Compare API. All right, so next we're going to go to the Visual Studio Code. That's my code editor. Whatever you use is fine. All right, I have it open right here. We can see we have uh, our source folder. We want to go to app and the app module TS file. And we're going to import two different things. So first we had our data service that we created. So I'm going to import that right here. So it's import data service from data.service. We can see that file right here. We can see it's an export class of data service. Then we're also going to import the HTTP module library from Angular HTTP. Next, we're going to take this name data service and we're going to add it as a provider. And then secondary to that, we're going to take this HTTP module and add it as a import. So this is all standard stuff. Um, whenever you're going to be using, you know, HTTP calls, you add this here. Or whenever you have a service, you also import it and then add it as a provider down here in this module file. So again, you know, if you're 100% new to Angular, this will be this will seem very foreign and alien and confusing, as most you know new technologies are. Or if you're new to it, but again, there's a pattern there. This is all very standard stuff. Um, so next, we're going to head on over to that data service right here. So we're going to import a couple of lines uh, at the top. So first, we're going to do import HTTP because we need the HTTP library to uh, interact with the API. So we're going to import it from, and this comes baked in within Angular, HTTP right there. And then we're also going to import right here, RxJS add operator map. And you'll see how this comes into play very shortly. All right, so inside of our class, at the top, we're going to add a result property of any, and this will basically store the result that we receive from the CLI, or not the CLI, sorry about that. Then in our constructor, we're going to create an instance, private HTTP to our HTTP of the HTTP library. And then next, we're going to create a method, get prices. And inside of here, we're going to return this HTTP get. And this is where the URL goes uh, for, to interact with the Crypto Compare API. Now, before I put that in there, I'm just going to leave it blank. I want to finish this code real quick. So this is where we use line three the map operator. So we put a map. By the way, I'm going to hit control B to get rid of that sidebar. It's just a little bit annoying. So we're going to put in result arrow function to this result equals result.json. And so, you know, where you know what exactly do we put in here? So I uh, this is a good point to look at the crypto compare API documentation. So if you go there, you can see the URL is cryptocompare.com forward slash API. Click on data. And these are all the different um, pieces of data that you can retrieve from the API. So we have a coin list. And you know, this is all very similar. If you go through all of these, we could see that we have URL parameters. For coin list, there's none. We're not going to be using this one, though. Um, but it does return a lot of different data. Uh, we could see the data here for like Litecoin gives you the ID URL, image URL, the coin name, full name, etc. But it gives you this for like hundreds upon hundreds of different, you know, altcoins and such. We don't want that. We're just going to keep things simple and go to price. And we're going to go to price multi. This is the one that we're going to use because it will allow us to specify uh, right here under, you know, for the examples, price multi, we can specify two different arguments uh, or URL parameters. Uh, where we separate through comma the different bit, or altcoins that we want and then also the currency, you know, the current currency value of each. So um, just to show you that, I'm going to paste in real quick an example right here. So we're requesting Bitcoin, BTC, ETH for Ethereum, and IoT for IOTA. 
Now, if you're kind of confused about, you know, where did I get these uh, names from, or these shorthand names, just go to coinmarketcap.com. You'll see all of these different, um, you know, essentially altcoins and such, these cryptocurrencies. If you click on them, it will show you the associated, um, the shorthand name for those currencies. And then we're saying for TSIMs, we just want the U.S. dollar equivalent of for, for each of these. All right. And so that's it for that file. Next, control B here on Visual Studio Code, we're going to go to the component file itself. So this is the component that's responsible for showing us that default landing page that showed up. So at the top, we need to import the data service like we did in the app module file at the top. So just copy that and then we'll go to up here and save that. And then within the class, we're going to remove that default title property and we're going to add our two of our own. So like object keys will equal, equal object dot keys. And then also cryptos property will hold the response, you know, of all of our cryptocurrency data, the price data that we requested. So object keys is a property right here on line 10 that's defined as a JavaScript object keys. And this is necessary because the response from crypto compare is composed of an object as opposed to an array. Normally you wouldn't have to do this with most other APIs. Um, so after here, we're going to add in a constructor as we saw in the other file where we create an instance of our data service. All right, then after this, we're going to use the ng for Angular on init or on, on, on initialize essentially, which means when this component loads by default, execute what, what, you know, whatever is inside of here. So this is where we make um, a call to our data service. So we're going to say this data, which is our data service get prices because that's what we named the method. Next, we're going to subscribe the result. And we'll say this dot cryptos, which is defined up here on line 11. And that will equal the response. We can also console log the response, which can be helpful for, uh, you know, creating the actual template. All right, so we'll save that. Let's get our sidebar up again. And now let's define a template real quick. So to do that, we go to app component HTML. We'll gut all this stuff here because we don't need it. And we're going to have a div with ng if equal equals cryptos, which is our property that we define. So once it's defined, we can display a div of ID crypto container. We'll define that in CSS in a little bit. ng4, which is a directive to um, you know, iterate over objects or array of objects or arrays. So we're going to say let crypto of, and then we're going to reference that property object keys and pass in cryptos, the cryptos property. All right, so inside of here, we're going to create a span of class left. It's going to just show crypto. So this isn't through interpolation. Crypto will be is the actual key right here. And that's going to show BTC, ETH for Ethereum and IoT. And then I'm going to use shift or yeah, shift alt and down just to replicate that above line. We're going to say a class of right, and on the right side, we're going to put in cryptos with the crypto key right here, USD for the object property, and we're going to pass in a pipe of currency, and this is baked in by default within Angular, and we're going to say it's a USD currency and true to show this symbol. All right, so let's save that. And then finally, let's define the CSS and app component CSS. I'm going to copy and paste just three different rule sets right here in this file. So that's our ID of crypto container has just a few properties here to make it look better and span left and span right. Nothing big going down there. And then also our style CSS. 
And that's just gonna be a body rule set right here to make the background a light gray and padding and font family Arial. So let's save this and we'll see if it works. It probably will not work just because um, it's late at night and we'll see if I, I actually typed everything correctly. Let's try it out. All right, no, I mean, the actual data is there, but the CSS is messed up for some reason. Oh yeah, it's because I didn't save this app component file. So I saved it just now, let's go back real quick. There we go. Surprisingly enough, it actually worked on the first try. Awesome stuff. So yeah, hopefully you learned a lot throughout this, you know, especially if you're interested in, you know, Angular plus cryptocurrency development. Of course, as I mentioned before, I've done the same tutorial for um, Vue.js and React. So yeah, I'm showing you obviously how to do the same thing throughout these three different, you know, JavaScript frameworks. And your bases should be covered at least when it comes to getting started in each of these three with displaying cryptocurrency data. So this is just really, you know, the very beginning of what we're going to start focusing on at Corsetra.com essentially when it comes to cryptocurrencies because there's also a whole nother world of blockchain development, especially with Ethereum, possibly with the IOTA, the IOTA Tangle. You're probably wondering what the hell is that? But you know, in due time, we're going to experiment with all this. It's all peer-to-peer, -peer, distributed ledger technology. Very exciting times we're in. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you like it, subscribe here at YouTube and check out CourseCetro.com. See you later.